actually feel that um, wonderful um, because, uh, because I had a birthday which was quite important recently as well. Um, when I qualified for my heating allowance, which was pretty important. Uh, but this 10th anniversary uh, is even more important uh, because we didn't know when we launched what we had let ourselves in for. Uh, we didn't even know until the last minute that we were actually going to launch 10 years ago. Uh, and so it has come as a huge, huge uh, surprise. Um, it goes back, some of you have heard the story before, uh, when a young lady knocked on my door and said, would you come down to the brook with me? And these opportunities are becoming very infrequent. <laughs> and, and she had found a <laughs> otter sprints uh, under the brook bridge. I told her she didn't know what she was talking about because I do speak with authority. Uh, I told her that it was mink and of course she was right, otters had come back and it was the otter that made us launch because there was land next to the brook uh, which was um, prairie right up to the brook edge and we had an opportunity to get it and it was next door to fields on the other side uh, that had been uh, looked after in a more sympathetic way. And so we decided to launch almost, not on the spur of the moment, but on the spring of Monta. And that is what we did. And as you know, there were so many important people who said launch. Um, Gordon Benningfield was one, and Betty and the family are here today again, which is brilliant to see. Uh, Lawrence van der Post was another. And all our regular trustees too, like Ken here, you know, and 10 years has passed and we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> he was as slim as you 10 years ago. And, and when we launched, the first field we got was 10 acres in size. And just after the purchase of Turnstone Farm um, this year in Herefordshire, uh, we're now up to nearly a thousand acres and we have three farms and we have a wood and we have a field and our land is in Yorkshire, in Sussex, in Herefordshire and in Cambridgeshire. The whole thing has just been remarkable. How do you see the next 10 years developing? Um, I have absolutely no idea uh, because it's been a white knuckle ride up to now and the white knuckle ride is continuing. Uh, we said that we wouldn't take out an overdraft ever and we have now got an overdraft of 870,000. Um, Turner Stone Farm cost us 1.27 million and we thought it was such a marvellous farm that we had to buy it. And I know quite a few people here went to the other day in Herefordshire and it is an amazing farm. And just as we have had hooligans here ploughing up wonderful hedges and grassland and all the rest of it, in Herefordshire, um, as many of you have heard Nigel say in the old cow shed at the farm, um, we've got pasture there which hadn't been touched for 400 years and they were going to plough it up for short-term potato growing. I mean, can you believe it? I suppose the only thing you could argue is that at least it would stop potatoes coming in from Egypt, um, which would be, well, Cyprus or anywhere, which would be a modest improvement. And then the other thing which is absolutely brilliant about Turnerstone is that here we get excited about certain things. I'm excited this year because we've got swallows nesting on the farm again and we get birds coming in with the season. There we get excited because in the spring they get the curlews calling and the curlews nesting and we had a meadow saxophrage which was a flower I hadn't seen for a long time. Got a lovely, lovely river and we've got one of the oldest systems of artificial, artificially flooding meadows that Roland Bourne started that, go, that goes back to 1570. 
1590. And uh, it came about because he saw where water seeped along a, a, along a, a mole's hole and it had made the grass grow early. And out of that came this amazing uh, system of drowning the land to get the grass to grow early. And so we've got all this wonderful, wonderful um, grassland in Herefordshire. We've got, I believe, transformed cereal land here. We've shown people what can be done, what should be done. And so the future really depends on what the government does, whether it sees the light that there is a way of farming sympathetically, sustainably, keeping people on the land, because that has been one change in the 10 years that we have come to accept that the person who grows the corn is as important as the corn bunting. You need communities of people and wildlife and flowers and birds the whole thing to make a complete entity, to produce quality food and to keep us in touch with nature. And our politicians and a lot of our people have become totally detached from nature and we have to try and link them back through the farm, through food production, through birdsong and flowers. And I don't know whether we will do that in, in 10 years, whether we will live another 10 years. But the one thing I would say, with Betty and Sally here, that, that, that I, I desperately want to write more and do less, but until we pay off the farm in Herefordshire, and until we've got the Benningfield Memorial Farm in Dorset, then I, I've got to keep going. And you've got to put up with me until we get these things achieved, and, and until We've all seen that the biodiversity, which Bellamy said two years ago, much better than me from up in the pulpit, until the biodiversity of Herefordshire increases and that we've got this wonderful farm in Dorset um, where we have butterflies and where we have Benningfield and where we have Thomas Hardy and where we have good food. Just very briefly, the low point in all of this, what was the low point? Um, there have been many low points. Um, the loss of Gorm, the loss of Lawrence van der Post, um, and then, you know, there are people who think that just by fighting for farming that you're a troublemaker. And that is one of the odd things that in this country where we fight for other people's freedoms, uh, if you actually express the same freedom here, then they don't say, oh good, that's the point of view. They say, troublemaker. They so say you're under and arrest. They say you're under arrest. And, and so I'm happy actually to be wearing this today. The first time someone said I should wear it. Is this England gave me this silver cross of St George this year um, for being a troublemaker. And uh, Gordon had the silver cross of St George. And so I'm proud to wear this. And uh, I shall keep saying, Please farm better, please look after the countryside, please consider rural communities. Um, and it is a low point to think that our message isn't being heard and appreciated by those who ought to know better. A high point? Having you as our chaplain, Peter, without any shadow of doubt. Yeah, I mean, I do wish you'd smart yourself up. <laughs> So many high points. You know, the other day, an unsolicited £4,000 from somebody who had just been to Herefordshire and liked it, a letter from somebody who had been to Barton and had heard the Skylar. All these things are high points. We get high points every week. Robert Page, thank you very much.